everyone, welcome to Simply Delicious Season 3. My name is Chef Ali Youssef and today we have invited vegetarian chef, Chef Wafa al -Mhanna. Actually, welcome. I'm a vegan chef. Thank vegan you. chef. <laughs> okay, you said, I said veggie and you said, what, what's the difference? Uh, vegetarians actually eat uh, eggs and honey and dairy, but vegans don't consume anything that is related to animals. Okay. <laughs> We'll get to that subject later, we'll talk about it. Right, what are you going to cook for us today? Uh, today we're going to start with something light, uh, because everyone is sitting at home and gaining weight, so we're going to do a salad. All right. Um, but I wanted to do a salad that will not get you hungry after half an hour. So this salad is actually very dense, but it's packed with proteins, uh, so it will keep you uh, sustained for many hours during the day. Good, sounds like... Sounds like a big meal. <laughs> Let's see what she's gonna do. Okay, so we're gonna start with the ingredients. Uh, of course, we'll need some kale. Uh, this is about a packet of kale. Uh, you, please try to get the local uh, Bahraini kale. It's cheap and it's also the best quality. Uh, then we need some cucumbers, some sweet potato. Uh, then we will need some chickpeas. You can make your own or you can get canned chickpeas. This is about a can of chickpeas tahina sauce, uh, sesame for garnish, a little bit of oil, uh, some chopped cucumbers, chop them any way you like, uh, lemon juice, fresh lemon juice, and then sweet potatoes. This is about two sweet potatoes, quarter of a cup of uh, maple syrup. Then the spices, we'll need some salt, pepper, cumin, uh, paprika, uh, we need some cinnamon, we need some garlic powder and onion powder. That's too many spices for a salad, I'm sorry to say that one, but, but as I said, it sounds like a big meal and that's why I'm so excited till the end. Right, how you start? And what okay. are we starting with? So let's start by prepping the things that take the longest time to make, which okay. are the uh, sweet potatoes and the chickpeas. With the sweet potatoes, uh, let us just put it in a bowl, please. Here. Thank you. So. We put the sweet potatoes in a bowl, a little bit of olive oil. Uh, you don't need to add the oil, but I like to add it because it lets the uh, spices attach to the sweet potato. I believe so. And also gives it a little bit of a crunch when you're cooking it. Uh, but you can totally roast it oil free. Uh, right. Okay, and then for the sweet potato, because it's already sweet, it has its, its flavors. We don't mess it a lot with it. So just a little bit of salt, pepper, Cinnamon. Mix it around, please. Do that. Right. Um, when did you start cooking and what inspired you? Oh, cooking, uh, ever since I was young, I was not allowed to be in the kitchen. I would sneak in the middle of the night to cook. That's my favorite part. That's my favorite question. I like to hear stories. Let's go. <laughs> and I've never stopped cooking ever since, even though I'm not allowed. And I'm forbidden from using a lot of things in my kitchen. Still, I do it. <laughs> well, good girl. <laughs> Thank What's you. What's next? So we just put this in a tray and bake it on 200 degrees for uh, around 25 to 30 tray. minutes. That's it. Let it cook on its own. Take a shower. Do whatever you want. <laughs> okay. While right. that's in the oven. Uh, the same we do with the chickpeas. Now you can do it both ways, either baking it in the oven and letting it be for 30 minutes, or you can put it on a stove top. Whatever you have or you want to do, you can do. So just to show you, we'll do it on the stove top. All right. It's ready. Look at small. Wow. <laughs> okay. I like the pan when it's hot. A touch of oil, you don't need a lot. What we're going to do in the beginning is that. Oh, the sizzling sound again. Yeah, and we want the water to evaporate completely from the chickpeas to make them crunchy. Okay. And then while it's evaporating, we can add all the other spices. So, start with salt, uh, smoked paprika, uh, garlic powder, onion powder, uh, cumin, and pepper. Everything goes in. What makes you decide to be a vegan chef? Ah. Uh. Um, I was actually looking for a diet to lose weight. Okay. <coughs> Sorry. I know. Uh, I, I feel you. I feel you. So I wasn't actually looking to become a vegan or vegetarian or anything. I was just looking to lose weight. 
uh, searching online and I found something called veganism. What is that? Started looking into it, looked at the ethical part. Sounds okay, let's try it for three days. So I tried it for three days um, and I could find myself that actually I can go mo more and do more than three days. Right. So right. I do five days a week, month, three months, and I'm still continuing until I finished five years now and still haven't stopped. <laughs> what advice would you give to these vegan people? For the vegan people, yes, they because don't you're need vegan advice. <laughs> when you become vegan, actually you've done your research, you looked into it, and you know what you're gonna do. So you don't really need that much advice. But in terms of cooking, uh, it depends on what you want to do. If you want to lose weight, go plant-based, which is pure plants, no processed foods like tofu and processed cheese. Okay. Um, no, uh, you know these creams and all of these processed things. Go plant-based, pure plants, unprocessed stuff, and do it from scratch. Cool. If you are doing it for ethical reasons, then you can eat all the processed goodies. Is it, <laughs> do you guys call it uh, cheating? It's not cheating, but unless uh, you're cheating on a diet, then yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but veganism is a lifestyle, actually. It's not a diet. So, okay. Yeah. So, being experienced vegan and vegetarian, I'm not sure if you experienced the vegetarians, as you mentioned, the difference between both. There is any certain places in Bahrain they can go to, can tell the vegans and... Uh, uh, veganism has grown in Bahrain quickly uh, for the last year, at, uh, at least, yeah, if not before that. Uh, so almost all restaurants now serve vegan dishes. Vegetarian dishes are have been in Bahrain since the 60s, maybe even before. I'm not going there. <laughs> <laughs> so anywhere you go now, you can find something vegan to eat. Even if you go to a local Indian store, a tikka place, whatever it is, like even the places now that sell traditional Bahraini rice, the one BD plate rice, they will veganize something for you. So it's not really All right. difficult. Yeah. Okay. Oh, that's good, some uh, tips that we heard about uh, vegans and vegetarians, which is not bad. So what are we doing next? So we're just waiting for the chickpeas to pop. Now, usually this will take 20 to 25 minutes. Okay. Um, the more oil you add, the quicker it will get ready. But, uh, but if you want it to be healthy, you don't need to add any oil. All right. Okay? So this is almost there. Uh, we have some prepared already to save time. Okay. So we can leave this on the side and use the prepared ones? Absolutely. Okay. So we get things ready, we get back to you shortly. So we are back and she's ready to make the sauce, right? You're yeah. doing the sauce first. Yes. Let's do it. Okay, so what we're gonna do, we're gonna take the lemon juice, add a little bit of the maple syrup to it, and it's about a quarter of a cup. You can add more or less according to what you like. Uh, the secret is in the tahina. Now, when you add tahina to anything acidic, it will thicken up. Actually, last night I used tahina at home. I made, I made, I made baba ganoush. Ah. Yes. Yes. Vegans use tahina actually a lot because it's an excellent source of protein. I use it for hummus, for baba ganoush, for your dish, but I don't know how many more dishes can go with. Yeah. Actually, you know, tahina you know, we is. We ate a, it with date. <laughs> Tahina is a traditional Arabic sauce, right? Yes. And we have a lot of vegan stuff in our traditional uh, Arabic kitchen that we're not aware of. So one of them is tahina. Uh, so rich in protein and rich in uh, fats, Ooh. which are excellent uh, if you're trying to maintain a good healthy diet. Okay, so you can thicken it up or thin it uh, according to your preference, whether uh, you use more lemon juice or less. So the more lemon juice, the thicker it is. The less lemon juice, the lighter it is. Okay? And then we have the kale, which is already cut up. Now you can cut it into small chunky leaves or you can cut them into strips. Uh, depending on the type of kale you like, whether dinosaur kale or this fizzy curly kale. Uh, before placing the leaves on the serving dish, add the uh, sauce to it and let it uh, just kind of sit around, massage it and marinate it. Uh, until the final moment you're ready to serve it. Okay. Right, what next? 
So I prefer massaging it with your hand, but since we're on set, maybe yes, yes, you better yes, not? Yes, absolutely. <laughs> we'll do that. Right after wearing my gloves. Okay. Because <laughs> just to be hygienic. At home I don't use gloves. I actually do with salad. So at home I will not use gloves. I do. Uh, I prefer my hands I'll to tell you feel why. the food and um, also to give your energy to the food. With, with salad only. <laughs> with no no with salad only. I don't use my hand. Because if I don't eat it all, I need to keep it in the fridge. But if you touch it with your hand, you can't keep it in the fridge. For your information. This is kale. You can touch it with whatever you want. It will not change. Really? <laughs> yes. Okay. That's why we're massaging it roughly, actually. Mm -hmm. uh, because it's, it's a tough leaf. Okay. Uh, so it will be okay. And we're and all over the oven. It's fine. <laughs> okay. Then. And, and also, uh, if you leave it with the sauce until tomorrow or the day after, it will not wilt. Really? Yes. Well, I think we're done. Yep. Okay, so we're ready to serve it now. We're ready to serve it. Let me get you the plate then. Okay. So you can do the ending out there. Okay. So we put the leaves on the serv serving dish. I prefer a dish in place of a bowl. This way you can see all the ingredients instead of them going all the way down to the bottom and you can't see them anymore. Then we have cut up cucumber, like I said, any way you like. Wow. And then this is the sweet potato. Yeah. This salad is excellent for um, bodybuilders, weightlifters, because they will look for an extra source of protein, which is perfect. Then we have the chickpeas. You want to try some? It should be crunchy on the outside and soft in mm. the middle. Yeah? That tastes good. And then um, you can actually play around with the spices with the chickpeas. The thing is, make it uh, salty and add a little bit more spice because the kale is, is mellow. So yeah. when you add this and then the sweet potato is sweet, so it contradicts each other and you have like a, a pack, it's packed full of flavor, yeah? So we have all of these and then finally we just add a little bit more protein. Sesame seeds. Sesame seeds. And? Well, before we finish the episode, that's the plate, that's the salad. What was the name of the salad again? So uh, crunchy chickpeas with sweet potato and kale salad. Kale salad. I would say thank you very much for coming. My pleasure. That was it for today's episode. I hope you all enjoyed Chef Wafa's salad. What again the salad name? <laughs> Crunchy chickpeas with sweet potato and kale. I'll write that down. If I was you, I'll write it down and I'll search for it and I'll make it. It could be her own recipes. By the way, you have your own recipes. You make your own recipes, right? Yes, uh, I try as much as I can to veganize traditional Bahraini dishes. Yes. Uh, so if you check out my Instagram, you'll see things like madruba, haris, wow. uh, biryani, all of these things veganized. Wow, impressive. So that was it for today's episode. Thank you all for watching me today. And hope you all enjoyed Wafaz salad and we'll see you in the next episode be excited because i have more surprises coming with more talented chefs as she is thank you and goodbye